Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> and welcome. As usual, we have tea after the service, so those who, uh, everyone is welcome to come through and join us for tea after the service for some fellowship and chat. The intimations are printed on a sheet. Um, you should have got them on the way in. If you didn't, there's some at the door on the way out. And as we've done the last, I don't know how many years, a good few years anyway, um, we're going to take part in Thy Kingdom Come initiative. So it's a global initiative and it's a worldwide prayer movement. And it happens every year between Ascension and Pentecost. So Ascension is this Thursday and then Pentecost is Sunday the 19th. So nine days between Ascension and Pentecost. So just reach every bit out of the beginning of the book. So it says, when Jesus spoke to his disciples before ascending into heaven, he promised them, you will receive power of the Holy Spirit, which will come upon you, and you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. So those first followers responded to this promise by devoting themselves to prayer, day after day, until the Holy Spirit came upon them. So the initiative, and it's not just Church of Scotland, it's um, countrywide, is that you think of five people that you know that don't know Jesus, and you pray for them each day. So to help you to do that, there's two resources. There's the Novena from Pentecost to, from Ascension to Pentecost. They were at the front door, and there's also a prayer journal. So you should have got one on your way in. If you didn't get one on your way in, they're on the organ if you go out that way, and there's some on the table as you go out. So it would be good to join together and to know that there's people across the country joining together in prayer for people that they know that don't know Jesus. So it's a good resource. And lastly, we welcome Ian to lead us in service, lead us in worship this morning. So welcome Ian. Those are all the intimations. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Warsaw this morning. Um, we you here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <honestly. laughs> it's great to be here to worship again. And to any visitors this morning, you are very welcome in this place. So let's tell our hearts and our minds for our call to worship. We come from scattered lives to this sanctuary to seek our unity in the Spirit, to seek the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, to seek the peace of God the Father. God's people are gathered. Let us worship him together as we sing the first hymn, CH4129. The Lord is King, lift up my voice.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-present God, creator of the universe, giver of life, from the dust you created us, you called us your children, you breathe life into us, and we come this day in this place to worship and to praise you. We give our lives to you in awe and wonder. We are in awe at your greatness and can only look on in wonder as you have called us your own. In spite of all our failings and misgivings, you love us with an unconditional love that knows no bounds. And yet, not in all this, we disappoint you. Nor in all this, we still look to the world and all of its distractions that keep us from following your ways and your commands. Lord, have the compassion and comfort for our fellow men and women that you, O Lord, have shown us. Give us hearts not of stone, but of love. Help us, Lord, not to turn away from those in need, but to tend them and love them as you have commanded. Open our minds that we may understand your word and live our lives as your children. Help us to use our talents to make this world a better place and to take the good news to those in our world who need it so much. In this short time of silence, we bring our own confessions and petitions to you. And now, O oh Lord, we further pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We turn to our scriptures now, our first reading from the Old Testament is Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song and meet with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let them build in righteousness and the people with equity. And from the Gospels we read from John, in my commands you will remain in my love just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you 
and appointed you to go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. We're going to sing again. Mission Praise 295. I serve a risen Saviour. Sometimes he likes a lot of fish. 
and even small arms. <laughs> and, did you know, they can spot. I didn't know that either. See the things you learn when you're doing job services. <laughs> From you, you're only very happy. Has he hasn't got a name. No. no. He says he hasn't got a name. Aww. Aww. <laughs> so, anybody know any Chinese names? And, and because they're from China, we don't want Scottish names. Like Hal or Jim or George. So, Chinese names, anybody? Light. 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 No. No. Yeah. no, it's not fussy for long. That reminds me of some of the fish that he eats. <laughs> Anybody else? Lee. Lee. Lee? Lee? Well, yeah. What? No. No, I just want to be here. Kim? Kim? She says that too much like her husband. <laughs> about Kung Fu after Kung Fu Panda. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> really Kung Fu Panda. Good, good. Kung Fu. I thought you'd be happy. What's wrong now? You've no friends. Oh. Oh. So they're really, really sad. Oh. Oh. No friends. Who would? Who would like to be his friend? Would you like to give him a wee stroke so that he knows you like him? Would you like to give him a wee clap? Oh, God. Oh, yeah. What did you do, Nan? Did you think it liked him? He's sad because he used to have two friends. Oh. And they left the red ones out. But they're already back to China now. I read I saw that in the news. So it is it was really sad. But we've all got a friend. And that friend is Jesus. Jesus, as we heard in the reading earlier, if you were listening, said, He doesn't want us to be servants and slaves to him. He wants us be his friend and, and Kung Fu Panda's friend as well. All of us. Jesus wants us to be his friend. And he really, really wants to be our friend. Because Jesus loves us so much that he gave everything for us. And all he wants from us is to be his friend and to do whatever he asks us to do all through our lives. Whether you're young or old or in between, that's what God wants from us through his son, Jesus. He wants us to love him and to be his friend and to love everyone around us and to be their friend. So can we do that? Can we be? Jesus is friend and gone through his friend. And he's really happy. He's really happy. So I'm going to put him back in his case now. Now, leave him. No? So, Going to sing again, and it's CH four five four seven, and it can only be one hymn. What a friend <laughs> we have in Jesus.
learns the lesson, Jesus tells his disciples that his father is a gardener, he is a vine, and a pair of the branches. In this discourse, Jesus is letting his disciples know that the time has come to begin the real work for which they have been chosen, namely to bear fruit for the kingdom. In today's reading, Jesus is telling them how they, simple, uncomplicated men, can do that. Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love. Just as I have obeyed my Father's commands, and remain in his love. I have told you this, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command. So there we have it, simple. Or is it? There are some key words in the passage that we need to look at and consider. Firstly, love. As Christians, we are sent out into this world to love one another. I'm sure that as we look around our world, our country or even our communities, like me, we don't see an awful lot of love. Sometimes we live as if we were sent into this world to compete with one another, or to argue with one another, or even to fight with one another. Such is the way of the world, or so it seems to me. Some may ask what right Jesus has to command that we love one another. <laughs> Jesus was the answer to that question. He said, no man can show greater love than to lay down his life for his friends, and I did that. Many tell men and women to love each other when it's the last time they themselves do. Jesus gave us a commandment that he himself first fulfilled. The whole Christian ethos is built on this love. As the first verse of that well-known hymn begins, O love that wilt not let me go, I rest my weary soul in thee, I give thee back the life I owe, that in thy ocean depths this flow may richer, fuller be. I read the story of a soldier in the First World War who asked his officer if he could go out into no man's land to bring in one of his friends who lay seriously wounded. You can't go, said the officer, but it's not worth it. Your friend has probably died and you will only throw your life away. But the soldier went. Somehow he managed to get his friend, lift him onto his shoulder and brought him back to his own trench. The two of them tumbled together and lay in the bottom of the trench. The officer looked very sympathetically on the would-be rescuer, and then he said, I told you it wouldn't be worth it. Your friend is dead, and you are mortally wounded. It was worth it, though, sir, he said. How do you mean worth it? I tell you, your friend is dead. Yes, sir, the soldier answered, but it was worth it. Because when I got to him, he was still alive. And he said to me, Jim, I knew you'd come. We are chosen for love, Jesus said. Greater love has no one than this. And he laid down his life for his friends. Secondly, joy. God chose us for joy, to be joyous. Jesus said, I've told you this, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy 
may be complete. The love of Jesus towards us is motivated by joy, his joy in us and our joy in him. I like to think of Jesus as having a sense of humour. Well, he chose us. Have you watched the programme on Amazon Prime called The Chosen? In the story, the actor portrays Jesus as a normal human being, experiencing all the emotions we do, but aside from the serious scenes, there are scenes of joy and laughter and yes, even of mischief. I like this little quote that I found from Roger Barclay. <coughs> the Christian is a man of joy, the laughing cavalier of Christ. A gloomy Christian is a contradiction in terms, and nothing is more off-putting and has done Christianity more harm than its connection with black clothes and long faces. It is so true that we as Christians are all sinners, but we are redeemed sinners. And there lies the joy. How can we fail to be joyous when we walk the ways of Jesus Christ, our Lord? Who can fail to feel the joy of God's perfect creation? When we see his creation awakening after the darkness of winter and witness new life and all around us, trees donning their new coverings, birds building their nests, newborn lambs gambling in the fields. Who can describe the joy of holding a newborn baby for the first time? Jesus would have experienced all of these things. What joy it must have brought to his heart to see all that his father had made. Let us, as his redeemed people, share our joy in knowing God's beloved Son. Thirdly, friends, Jesus said, You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant doesn't know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my Father, I have made known to you. Wow. Imagine Jesus wanting to be your friend and my friend. The word servant is used all through the Bible. Servant or slave, as it was sometimes used, is not used in a derogatory context. Moses was a servant of God. So was Joshua, and so was King David. It is a title which both Paul and James counted it to be an honour to use. Some of the greatest men in the past were proud to have been called servants or slaves of God. And Jesus says, I have something greater for you yet. You are no longer slaves or servants, you are my friends. Jesus offers us an intimacy with God that not even the greatest men before he came into the world knew. Jesus called us to be his friends and the friends of God the Father. That's an offer that we should not refuse. It means that we no longer need to view God from a great distance. We are not like slaves or servants who cannot enter his very presence. We are not like the crowd waiting to get a glimpse of the king as he passes by on some great state occasion. <laughs> Jesus gave us this intimacy with God so that he is no longer a distant stranger to us but our closest friend. Jesus has given us the honour of making us partners in his task. He has shared his mind with us, 
He has opened his heart to us. The choice laid before us is that we can accept or refuse that which of the Christ and the work of leading the world to God. Friendship with Jesus can begin right now. It is personal, it is real, and it is life changing. I. E. Reynolds, an American composer, wrote these words. When the sun shines bright and your heart is light, Jesus is the friend you need. When the clouds hang low in this world of woe, Jesus is the friend you need. If you're lost in sin and all is dark within, Jesus is the friend you need. God alone can save through the Son He gave. Jesus is the friend you need. When in the Sadra, when in death's grim power, Jesus is the friend you need. If you would prepare against the tempter's sneer, Jesus is the friend you need. When the cares of life all around are rife, Jesus is the friend you need. Glory to his name. Always he is the same. Jesus is the friend. We were chosen to be ambassadors. I have chosen you, he said, to send you out, not to live a life retired from the world, but to represent him in the world. What a privilege. When a knight came to the court of King Arthur, he didn't come to spend the rest of his days in nightly feasting and fellowship. He came to the king saying, Send me out on some great task which I can do for king and country. Jesus chose us firstly to come into him and then to go out into the world to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to all and that should be the daily walk that we take. The way to bring others into the Christian faith is to be Christian. The way to bring others into the Christian faith is to show them the face of Jesus in us, every one of us. Jesus sends us out not to argue people into Christianity, still less to threaten them into it, but to attract them into it. We have to show that the fruits of Christ are so wonderful that others want to claim them for themselves. We are privileged members of the family of God. And of course, as such, we must take everything to God in prayer. On our own, we will achieve nothing. But with God, all things are possible. So what about us here in this place today? Will we, whatever our age, our status, whether we're young or old or everything in between, will we be ambassadors for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour? After all, He chose us. Amen. We come again to sing Mission Praise 352. I found a friend, oh such a friend. <laughs>
let us come before the Lord once more as we dedicate our offer and pray for our world. Precious God, you have blessed us beyond our deserving. You have given us more than we could ever have dared ask for. Loving us with a love that refuses to count the cost. Showering us with good things too many to number. Precious God, for your generous and wonderful gifts we praise you. And we bring our offering as a token of our thanksgiving. Use it and use us to further your kingdom in this place. Loving God, we pray for those who are weighed down by the stresses and strains of everyday life. Those who long for peace of mind, who crave rest for their weary souls, but cannot find it. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who have put you to the back of their minds, who have consigned you to the bottom drawer of their lives. Lord, speak to each one. Pull them back onto the straight pathway that they may know you more. Sovereign God, we pray for the weak and vulnerable in our world, those who feel powerless in the face of the massive problems that they face daily, especially those living through wars and conflict, famine and drought, those who have lost hope in a world that seems to have forgotten them. We pray for those whose dreams have been destroyed, those who no longer have the heart to look forward or to achieve their full potential, who have no vision, only desolation. God of hope, breathe kindle a new flame in their hearts. We pray for those who live as refugees in strange and unfamiliar lands. We pray for those children who have been often and traumatized by the world around them. Oh Lord, we lift those who have power over all of us, praying that they would put people first before ambition and greed, and that they would stop the suffering of so many in this world. Give to all those entrusted with such positions an open mind, the ability to make fair decisions, wisdom to see the right way forward, and strength to bear the responsibility faithfully and in your name. We ask all of these things in and through the name of our Redeemer and friend, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We say again in CH4 531, my Jesus, my Savior, and we'll send us through twice.
those who need joy. Bring comfort to those who need comfort. Befriend those who have no friends. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Redeemer.